In terms of the interface between, on the, going back to the issue of mind, right? Yes. Clearly, he doesn't have a brain, and even if even if you're skeptical that we'll ever be able to have artificial intelligence that's truly convincing, if we ha if you can cure blindness with those glasses, if you can inject things into a person's brain, already they've got they've got these little machines that can hopefully cure Parkinson's disease or a yes. lot of the you know that's that's coming down the pike. Uh, is there, is there a point at which we will sort of cease to be entirely human because so many of us will be engaged with some of these technologies? You're touching on a very delicate ethical issue of all this development that we see in bionic technology that we also try to touch upon a little bit in the film. What happens at the point where bionic body parts surpass their natural counterparts? Mm -hmm. What if we get a leg, for example, that lets us run faster than natural legs? What if we get a hand that lets us type 10 times as fast than a normal hand? Would people elect to replace a healthy limb with an artificial one because it offers them more functionality? I mean, some people already alter their bodies through plastic surgery mm -hmm. in order to you know, get a, a body that's better in terms of aesthetics. So why would it stop when it comes to functionality. Mm -hmm. And even with regard to the brain, we've seen some developments towards such a future. We have visited a lab for the program where they are working on a chip that is supposed to replace a certain area of the brain, the hippocampus. It's supposed to help people who have dementia access their memory because they have problems with accessing their long-term memory. But they've experimented with it in rats and they've put this chip in the brain of a healthy rat. And what they got was a kind of a super rat with a memory capacity beyond the memory capacity of a normal rat. Mm which of course would give such a rat an advantage because it would remember more food sources, mm. for example. So the question is, should we do that? I mean, I don't think that we should put any limits on, on, on the scientific discoveries behind it, but I think it's important as a society as a whole to have a conversation around these issues, to have a conversation about what a society might, like that might look like in the mm. future before the technology becomes available, and it will be up to the business people and to the engineers to make these decisions. Mm. I mean, what if wealthy people could make themselves hyper smart? Exactly, or live longer, or live for longer. example. I mean, I mean, what you, sorry. Well, no, go ahead. Now, what you see in uh, the bionic man over there are first prototypes of artificial implantable organs. Mm -hmm. There is this gray um, cigarette box shaped sized thing in him which is the first prototype of a fully implantable kidney mm. um, or uh, on the right hand side a prototype of an implantable ca uh, pancreas I mean these devices at the moment are of course intended to cure illness and disease but what if we had artificial organs that for mm. example extended our lifespan look we already I mean my, my father got a pacemaker put in last week so that's already I mean and presumably this uh, this limb would be able to they must be able to program that to have incredible strength right you must be able to crush a a glass. If well, you not like, quite if yet you, because, really chose because the motors are, are, are too small. But mm -hmm. yeah, um, maybe we will see these kind of quote unquote superpowers in, in bionic limbs. And at that point, they might become a mass market, right? Because mm. at the moment, these are niche products catering to the very few who uh, require them, you know, the people with a disability or, or a disease. But if bionic limbs became so powerful that they potentially were something for everybody, they would create their own market. Mm. Uh, and You can imagine people actually having their limbs amputated in order to replace them with uh, robotic limbs. I don't know, can you? Limbs. Yes, it's conceivable. It is conceivable, yeah. exactly. And the question is, should we, should we allow that? And all, so, so um, the bionic man that we have here not only demonstrates how far we've come in terms of the technologi uh, technological advancement, mm. but it also, he also highlights some of the ethical implications yeah, that come along with this kind of development.